what's up, everyone? Sam Shah here, founder of Wall Street Mastermind. I'm excited to be back today with another client interview for you guys. And uh, today I'm really excited to have Daniel on here with us. Uh, Daniel is one of our uh, longtime students. We've been working with him together for uh, just over a year now, right about a year. And uh, it's been a very long journey, but happy to say that he recently um, wrapped up his recruiting process for his junior summer internship and uh, was able to get an offer that he's very, very happy with. And so I just wanted to you know, get him on here to talk to you guys about his experience and um, just share some insights and tidbits from how he was able to get to this point that will hopefully help you with your own recruiting process as well. Cause you know, obviously it's a very uh, challenging and grueling process. And so uh, with that said, Daniel, I want to first thank you for um, taking the time to be here with us today. But uh, if you don't mind just starting us off with a quick introduction of who you are and kind of what your profile is, and then, uh, you know, we'll kind of take it from there. No, Sam, thank you for having me. So on a very high level, um, I'm an international student, actually from, from Bogota, Colombia. Um, currently a junior at NYU, majoring in, in economics. Uh, Sam said, long recruiting process, but finally done with it. And great, great, great experience so far. That's awesome, man. Um, so like, I guess the first thing that people always want to know is, uh, what offer did you get? <laughs> so let's yeah. take them out of their suspense. <laughs> so I'm going to the Latin team of Scotiabank. Actually, I, I, I wanted to go into a, a Latin team. There are very few of them. And mm. I actually got into one of the best ones. So I'm extremely happy with it. So mm. yeah, that, that that's great. That's awesome. Um, So... And obviously you want to get in a Latam team because that's where you're from. And so that's what yeah. you're passionate about, right? Exactly. Um, so that's awesome. Sounds like a really, really great fit for you. Um, so kind of take us back to the beginning. Like, uh, obviously, like I said, you know, you've been working with us for about a year. You joined like November of sophomore year, which is kind of like yeah. right, right before when um, all the applications started opening up, right? Yeah. Um, had you done anything on your own prior to joining Wall Street Mastermind up to that point? Like, were you already kind of prepping for recruiting or networking or applying to stuff? Or were you kind of like just starting out when you joined us? What was your situation? Yeah. So I think my situation, um, a lot of people could relate to because I was that typical sophomore that wanted to get into IB, like seeing all the videos, reading all, all these posts, like whatever. And I was actually like, I had a mentor, like uh, upper grade. He gave me some guides. I had no idea what was going on. Just started digging more, watching more YouTube videos, a lot of materials, just getting more confused. Mm -hmm. And then going to other platforms and getting even more confused. So that was me. Like I was just a, a sophomore, like with the idea that I wanted to get into investment banking, but actually not knowing what specific steps like I should follow in order to get there. Mm, gotcha. When you say like other platforms, like what 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 were some of the things you used? Oh, like for example, the of course you know the guides. Like that was the main thing. Like if you go for the like for the first time, like you know that it's a it's a horrible and it's a horrible thing. And even more if you're not a business major, like econ major with that guys no no idea. Like it's a it's a bad thing. Yeah. Then for example, once you get like those guides you start searching for terms like in in youtube in what you do and it's just it's a big snowball mm, gotcha if if anything it almost creates more questions than answers because now you feel like you there's all these new terms that you're reading about in the guys that you don't understand but then you now have to go and do research on your own and it just becomes like more and more confusing basically no for sure yeah yeah I think like, honestly, uh, one of the hardest things about um, learning technicals is like, even if you know what are all the different concepts that you have to learn, mm -hmm. a lot of times they, it's hard to connect the dots on like how they relate to each other. And it's hard to like yeah. tie everything together and like see the entire picture. Um, mm -hmm. and, and if you don't learn these concepts in like the right order of operations, like- exactly a lot of them have um, dependencies on each other. Like if you don't understand how the, for example, you don't understand how the three statements work. You can't really learn how to do a DCF, but like a lot of people will yeah. jump to like, Oh, I know I got to learn a DCF. So they'll like try to learn that first, but they don't even know like 
the difference between an income statement and cash flow statement, for example, right? No, yeah, that's that's a great example. But also, what I've realized is that most people they do not understand what they are what they're learning in a way, quote quote. Because, for example, with this guide, and and I'm speaking from my personal experience as well. Like when I when I was having these guides, I was memorizing stuff. Yeah, that's great. But I was I realized that I was not actually understanding what I was learning. Yeah, yeah like for example, I would I, I don't want to get into the nitty gritty, but I know I know that you know what I what I mean. Yeah. No, and that's very common. Uh, we see that all the time, which is like most people think, oh, well, to learn technicals now, I just need to memorize the questions in the or memorize the answers to the questions. I've got like the four hundred questions guide. I'm gonna memorize these four hundred answers. In reality, it's like if that's what you're doing, unless your interviewers only asks you questions that are a part of the 400 questions you already memorized. Yeah. Once they start asking you different questions, then you're going to be screwed, right? Because you only memorize exactly. the questions. And what are the chances that the interviewers are going to ask you the exact questions from those guys? Like it's pretty much zero because it's pretty much zero. Like from all of the interviews that I had, I think that I got one, one question out of the 400 questions. And it's like, how would you value an apple tree? That was the similar way. Like even the depreciation question, it, it has like, it's the, it's a little bit tweaks in, in the real yeah. interviews. It's easy to just change the numbers or change the assumptions or phrase exactly. it differently. And they're going to do that because they know every single student is already memorizing those guys. Like it doesn't really mm -hmm. tell them anything if they just ask you the exact same questions. Right. Yeah. Um. So I think that's like a big mistake that a lot of people are making, but um. nonetheless, okay. So you were, long story short, doing um, a lot of the same things that most people tend to do when they first start out uh, in this recruiting process. Yeah. And so what made you want to join Wall Street Mastermind? Like November of sophomore year, like what, what was it that made you decide, like, oh, actually, I'm going to now go do something different or go join this program? Look, this was something actually that I, that I spoke with my father. Like I am very close with my father. He's a very good friend of mine. And I actually told him about this goal that I have. And he was asking me like, hey, what are you doing? And we were, we both realized that what I was doing there, it was not the most effective path. Mm -hmm. So we actually went back and reflected on something, on a similar experience that it was when I was applying to college, to colleges, right? So as I told you, I'm an international student applying to the US, like it's a whole different story. And mm -hmm. I was lucky to have mentors like a group like watching much man but for colleges that helped me with my application process mm. and it was extremely successful and me and my family we loved that and so we took these experiences and we took it to my next goal that is now it was my professional career so mm. i started digging like doing some research okay who can help me get accomplish this goal and someone who is not my uh the guy above like in, in the year yeah like in, in school yeah. So started digging, we, dig, uh, we realized that this was the best path to go. And I, uh, that, that, and I'm, I'm here now, like, what can I say? So basically what I'm hearing is, that's interesting. Um, you and your dad both agreed that you need to go find a mentor before you start doing the research that eventually led you to Wall Street Management. And I say that's interesting because like, I think most students, the way they find us is like, they find us first on their own. And then they yeah. have to go and talk to their parents about, Hey, mm -hmm. mom and dad, look at this thing I found that I really want to sign up for. And can you please yeah. help me? Right. But in this case, because you guys mm -hmm. already had such a positive experience with getting mentorship for something yeah. else, that's also very important, which is getting into a good college. You understood the value of having mentorship basically exactly yeah for which sure. is awesome because i have to say like we also do meet um parents that have like the complete opposite mindset which is like they tell their kids like uh why can't you do this on your own like if you can't do this on your own then uh you don't deserve it or whatever right like and no and, yeah i and, completely i completely understand yeah and, and, and to me that's like a very um outdated and backwards mindset but it's not to cut you off what were you gonna say though no, look, is that with my father, like, we understand that I'm not the first guy that's trying to get into IB. I was not the first guy that wanted to get into a college, like a university, clearly not. And there are people who know the way, like in the colleges or in IB, like whatever, there are people who study this, like they, 
have gone through it, they know what works, they know what doesn't work. And like, if you understand that, like it's, it's a no brainer. It's a no brainer. And I think the way that you guys think about it is honestly how all the most successful people that I know think about these kinds of things. The most yeah. successful people do not have an ego to say like, oh, I'm too good to ask for help. The, they, they just want like the most straightforward path to whatever their goal is, right? It's like, there are people yeah. that are more knowledgeable than me, more you know experienced than me, who have already done this many, many times before. Why would I want to like recreate the entire uh, process or figure it out from scratch? Not exactly. The mistakes on the, on, along the way, especially when like, it's something that's like time sensitive, like recruiting. Mm -hmm. And also extremely time things. sensitive and, and, and you only have probably like one or two shots at achieving your goal. So it's like, if you do too much exactly. and, error and you let it go by, you might not get in. Right. Exactly. Um, so I think that's really, really smart. I guess one thing I did want to ask you is like, um, I assume your dad is still like back home in Colombia or is he here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. He is. How, how, how did he, uh, how did he react when you told him you got into the Latin group at, uh, uh, Scotia Bank. I was actually at the time I was with him, so oh. it was crazy. We celebrated a lot. Like it was, it was amazing. Like it was something that we like. I don't say that I only worked, but like it, this is something that also my family like we put in the work. Like this is recruiting is not something like like from my perspective. It's not only you. Like it's all, from the people also like behind you and such. And this is something like that we were working for, as you said at the beginning of the interview for over a year. And when we got it, it was amazing. Also with my mother, like with my girlfriend, my friends, all of them like, yeah, bro, like you accomplished your goal. That's amazing. That's sounds, and yeah, as well. That I, I, I was awesome. telling you before. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Like you happen to be with all of the people that you're closest to at the time that you found out, is what you're saying. Yeah. It was extremely like I'm a Catholic guy like that God's timing perfectly. It was the first time that I was going home, like back to Colombia in a while. I was with my family. It was perfect. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. And um, I if 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 I may, like I'm also one of the biggest joys like out of this is that if people understand, like for example, my background, like in being an international student, like the econo like how the economy job market was this this recruiting season was terrible yeah. and also being from a semi-target university like for banks mm. like achieving that that was like amazing so that was why the big joy yeah for sure um semi-target because you're not in stern you mean like you're just in like uh yeah kind of business school yeah so uh absolutely man it's a great accomplishment i mean being an international student always makes things harder you have less firms that you can actually apply to because not all of them will sponsor mm -hmm. And then, uh, obviously, like you said, it's a very challenging market right now. There's a lot fewer jobs this year than last yeah. year. So there were a lot of things against you. And so I guess that, um, man, I, I was like just, I was picturing uh, what it's like for you to <laughs> be with all of your loved ones when this happened. It's like, I remember when I got my offer, it was like such an amazing feeling, but I'm pretty sure I was like by myself or something. So I had to like you know, <laughs> call, call everyone I, and tell them. But um, yeah, yeah, for <laughs> sure. But, uh, but, but so let's talk about, I think, um, the most important part, uh, for people who are listening to this, probably like they're wondering, um, <clears throat> like, how did you do it? Right. So like, you, okay. You joined Wall Street Mastermind like a year ago. Mm -hmm. Talk to us about what you've been doing over the last year. Cause this is obviously, it didn't happen overnight. You know, it was a very long process. I'm sure you had to go mm -hmm. through a lot of ups and downs and rejections along the way. And. At some points, you probably thought it wasn't gonna happen, right? Like all the normal uh -huh. emotions yeah. that people go through. But like, what were the things that you were doing once you came in that you felt like um, really had a positive impact on your recruiting process, and like things that really um, just like changed the trajectory for you? Like, you know, like because you were saying how before you were trying all these things and it didn't really work, right? So like, what yeah. finally caused things to kind of click for you? I guess. That's a that's a great question. And um, first of all, like you said, it's it's a whole process. Like it's it's a whole process and it's a very long one. But the things that I was actually doing, like I want to say that firstly, this is something that actually I'm taking, like Wall Street Masterminds like guideline, like Thailand, for example, the first thing was prepare the mind. 
and this was something that all the kids at school are not are not telling you like recruiting like is is stuff like it's, it's no easy it's no easy right mm -hmm. and the first thing that i actually found very valuable was preparing the it, it was the secret sauce as, as someone <laughs> likes to call it yeah <laughs> Uh, and, and actually that's something that I'm taking like for after recruiting yeah mm. like the lessons in in the mindset like module and such are extremely valuable things that I'm definitely taking for many many years to come mm. so that was the first thing the first thing second of all and the part that I, know, I just enjoyed... pause there that's amazing like I love hearing, <laughs> I love hearing that uh, it's not something that gets highlighted very much by students, but it's like, yeah, we started with the mindset stuff because uh, I actually genuinely believe that a lot of times when students don't succeed in this process is because they don't have the right mindset. And it's that's a mindset. Like, like, it's not just this who... process, it's life in general. There's like exactly a lot and of really banking as well. Yeah. There's a lot of really big challenges that are, you know, going to be ahead of you because you're so young still and like, it's the mentality and the approach that you have when you um, go through these experiences. And a lot of times that determines like, you know, the 80, 80, 20 of like, whether you're going to be successful or not. Right. Completely agree. I, and I do want to highlight that one of the biggest things of watching mastermind is the mindset module. Like absolutely knowing that like parents, whoever's listening to this, this is the secret sauce right here. <laughs> People are like, this is so woo woo. Like they have no idea what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> but yeah. So second, like second of all, and this was my favorite part of the process, but also the one that I hated the most. Mm -hmm. Extremely contradictory, but it was the application and networking and networking part of it. Mm -hmm. There's so much to networking that I definitely had no idea about like mm. crazy like even sending a calendar invite mm. like things small things like that and so then i started networking i was sending emails like crazy for example i i was i was seeing my other friends for example that have a uh, connections in the banks and everything like just making phone calls, phone calls to their dads like asking them for help whatever while i was just sending emails and getting into linkedin uh, using the tools that that like that can be used in order to leverage like all the resources and and everything so and then i was going to coffee chats i, um, I was lucky that i was in new york when i was recruiting so um i mean just walking like to the offices and such so that i was going to coffee i was meeting this person here in the morning then this other one in the afternoon so that was the second part of it yeah for sure so basically learning how to actually network the right way and everybody mm -hmm. knows basically everybody knows you're supposed to network but actually what most people including yourself didn't realize is like all the very nuanced details and steps in between that you have to really make mm -hmm. it perfect it's in the details it's all in the details yeah. and it's the details that once again is that that you're not going to find in the internet like if you're lucky enough to like to know them like good for you but that's extremely rare so it's all in the details like when i was saying like how how to send an email at what time send an email to how many people send that email see if, if you're going to send them to the same group and for example for me since it was i was very like team specific i had to be extremely careful with that i couldn't i, I knew for example one of my biggest mistakes was sending an email to people from the same team on the same day my chances there was we're off mm. and those are things that you learn with with the modules like from Wall Street Mastermind mm. yeah for sure okay so networking so do you feel like by the end of the, I mean I don't know how many networking chats you ended up having throughout this process I don't know if you kept track of it but like from how you initially networked when you first started doing this to like how you were networking towards the end like was there like a night and day difference or like no of course and and that's also something very curious because i come somehow from a consulting background yeah and i had the idea that i was getting like into companies through hr at least that's how most of consulting works mm. yeah like if you want to get like that internship in consulting you, you go speak with the with hr like make them like you and probably you're gonna get an interview but most of the banks, at least, 
it's you have to network with bankers mm. and and that's like a different story yeah yeah that's um networking is a very unique thing when it comes to banking it's like very i don't feel like there are many other industries or jobs out there that require you to do this amount of networking so yeah most people I in college have so. never had to do this and so uh -huh. you can't be expected to be experts at how to network when you never had to do it before in your life right mm -hmm. um, yeah so okay so you worked on networking and then you overcame that challenge you got pretty good at it um what, what yeah. else would you say kind of made a difference for you i loved it actually one one of the things that made the difference was definitely the technical technical mastery like yeah. actually learning behavioral i i believe that i i didn't put much work into it because I, like um I, I believe at least i believe that i'm a good person speaking i'm expressing myself so yeah. i didn't put much much effort there but then the biggest biggest part was the technical and mm -hmm. the most important one like definitely mastering all of like yeah you can speak more about it but the mastering all of that like it's most important thing for me mm. so i mean obviously we talked about this a little bit earlier when we were talking about what you were doing prior to joining wall street mastermind like memorizing the guides and how you were getting you know more confused and overwhelmed and whatnot mm -hmm. what is it about the way that you learn the technicals inside of wall street mastermind that was different for you because like you're still learning the exact same concepts right yeah um so why is it like easier to understand or less confusing for you this time look so the first main thing is that once you open the technical module you have a big umbrella over all the topics mm. that's something actually that i listen up like i heard this extremely like brilliant guy stand for whatever uh that he explained that one of the best starting tips like in a semester not like in a module but in an academic semester is to first of, first have the big idea of everything that you're going to learn. Mm. And once you have that, it's going to be way more easier for you because you're, you're going to be able to connect dots among like among all the things that you're studying. Yeah. So for example, okay, you understand this first branch, the first branch, and then you don't understand why you're doing it, like if you don't have the big picture. So that was the, the first main thing is that uh, with a long, long video to our video, like you get the whole idea of of all the technical things that you need to to understand in order to get that IP offer. Yeah, that's a really, really um, that's a really uh, insightful point, actually. Yeah, I know exactly the training you're talking about, which is like the two hour technical crash course that we put at the very beginning of the technical module, right? Yeah. And for those of you that are not in the program that don't understand what he's talking about, um, basically we first do a two hour training that just gives you like the 30,000 foot view of like, mm -hmm. here are all the different technical concepts you need to know. And here's how they all kind of tie together. So it's almost like we connect the dots first without getting too into the weeds. And then we start going into like each of those areas and deep diving. And now that you have that 30,000 foot view of the, what the entire picture looks like, everything starts to make more sense when you actually get down into the weeds, right? Exactly. Yeah. That's, um, it's funny because uh, I, I, I didn't read this uh, Stanford studying tip thing that um, you did, yeah, yeah. obviously, but I don't know. I guess we just intuitively designed it out. It wasn't <laughs> <Makes> like, <laughs> it wasn't like by uh, some super thoughtful design or whatever. Um, or we just thought like, yeah, this would be a good way to learn it. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. But I think like, you know, the, the, the thing that I want people to take away on the technical side is like really understanding what skill you're being asked to develop in order to pass these interviews, to pass the technical interviews, like, you're not being asked to, you know, regurgitate answers to like the uh, exact list of questions that's predetermined. They're not going to do that. You're not being mm -hmm. asked to, uh, you know, build a financial model. Cause like, I mean, I don't know how many interviews you went through, but like not, <laughs> not once did not they ever ask you to build a model, right? Never. So a lot of people like, they're like, oh, I'm going to take these financial modeling courses. It's like, you're I'm not saying it's not a useful skill, but it's just not the right skill for the right time. Right. Uh-huh. 
And so like the skill that really is being tested is like, can you verbally explain or teach these concepts to your interviewer who's sitting across the table from you? And so the test for whether you're ready or not for these technical interviews is like, can you turn around? If you, if you say you know how to do a DCF, for example, can you turn around and teach or explain what a DCF is to like your brother or your sister or your dad? Exactly. Who knows the the most difficult, fun? sorry to interrupt you there, but the most difficult question that I got asked in an interview was explain to a three-year-old baby, five-year-old baby, five-year-old baby, how a DCF, what a DCF is and what, a, how a DCF works. Yeah. <laughs> and, what, and what they're testing you there is like, you can't just like tell them what the formula is because a three-year-old will find yeah. it. Yeah, right? <laughs> exactly. So you have to be able to explain all these things in like layman terms, like in ways that even a child could understand it. And so that is yeah. the real test. And that is also like kind of what we have in mind when we're teaching uh, our students technicals is like, that's the test we're trying to help you pass. So that's the skill that we're trying to transfer to you, right? Mm -hmm. Um so that makes a lot of sense. Uh, anything else you want to add? Aside from, I, mean, I mean, I know we were talking about a bunch of stuff, but... Um... Yeah, yeah, I, I actually do. Um, something that I, I also found extremely valuable was the mock interviews within, within each section of the technical module. Because, hmm. yeah, you can understand the concept, like that, that's great, that's a first big step. Um, you can connect the dots and everything, but also listening not memorizing but listening and seeing how other successful people like people that have actually know know how to do this answer these questions is extremely like it's also extremely valuable from my perspective mm. gotcha yeah because sometimes you can understand the concept and you know the answer but the way you deliver the answer can still sound better exactly. or sound worse like you can be very long-winded and ramble or you can be mm -hmm. like very concise and straight to the point. And typically, my experience, was, mm -hmm. the more concise you can be, the more intelligent you sound, right? The better, exactly. That was actually one of my biggest mistakes when I was starting is that it, like time constraint, because uh, it has they like, got yeah, whatever. Do some, uh, I, I, I wasn't able to listen to the to the mock interviews, so I just basically first went to the modules and didn't listen to them. And after listening. To the mock interviews, I realized like, hey, that's why they didn't call me to the next to the next round. But but yeah, so it's actually it's actually great. Yeah, for sure. That's awesome. Um, anything else from the technical module itself, or just in general? No. It doesn't have to be the time goals, but in general, no. Like, if you have more questions, like. Go for it and we can we can continue the conversation. I, I'm pretty yeah, sure no, more things are going um, to come up. Let, let me ask you. Uh, so I'm gonna ask you my favorite question. Then this is usually the one that um, I save for the last. But uh, now that you are kind of on the other side of this recruiting process, like you've gone through it successfully, um, what's one piece of advice, or I guess your best piece of advice that you have for people who are maybe still recruiting now, or maybe are about to start recruiting? Because I'm sure you learned a bunch of stuff along the way that in hindsight, you're like, Oh, I wish I knew this when I first started, it would have made my life so much easier. Is there anything like that, that you want to kind of pass down to maybe some of the younger folks? Yeah, I, I definitely would. Um, and I, I believe that the biggest lesson that I got from recruiting and it's something that can be applied to this specific process, but also to other things in life is that nothing is going to be given to you. Mm -hmm. Like, here the only thing like however you do it like you have to put in the work mm -hmm. no one's gonna do it for you there's ways like there is more you can work smart as well like for example not putting your, yourself through a lot of work like for example there are things that you can avoid if 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 i make myself clear for example mm -hmm. all the unnecessary research that can be done in terms of the banking but at the end of the day However you do it, no one's going to do the work for you. Like, mm -hmm. this is something that you have to put yourself into 110%. Like, this is something that you have to day and night work on it. Like, put your best effort, put the best attitude, and most importantly, put in the work. However you put it, like, I hope it is that it's in this smart way, but you need to put in the work. Yeah. 
for sure. Um, I think that's such a good piece of advice because I think a lot of people get the wrong idea that, oh, you know, if you join Walsh Mastermind, then like, it's just going to be super easy. Or like, if you join Walsh no. Mastermind. <laughs> <laughs> that, was the, that was the idea that I had. I was like, hey, I'm getting like this. I'm going to get my Goldman Sachs offer and then I'm, and I'm out of here. Like, no, like, however you do it, like, you need to, you need to work. Yeah. That's like, life. I, like, I wish it was that easy, right? Just like sign up for Walsh Mastermind, then this high paying, prestigious, amazing job is just going to, you know, <laughs> fall into your lap. Like it, it doesn't, life doesn't work like that. Like you have to go out. It doesn't work like that. Uh, the way that I kind of think about it is, you know, even professional athletes that like, you know, play their game at the highest level, they work with coaches to help them so that they can perform better and actually win at whatever sport that they're playing. But they still have to work their butt off and practice and watch games and you know you know like just mm -hmm. put in the, the blood tears and sweat to to accomplish your goals, right? Um, it's just that mm -hmm. like you're gonna have to work that hard either way. But sometimes you work that hard and you still don't get the results that you want. Exactly. Like you rather work hard and get the results that you want. There's no option that says don't work hard and get the results that you want. Like. Life Man. is not that easy. <laughs> Life is not that easy. Yeah, for sure. And and actually, you brought you brought up something that I was referring to. Like, there is ways how you work, right? Like, you can go to the way like work smart. Like, for example, specifically to recruiting. Like, you can make yourself go to those extra hours and work five times harder if you don't have the information, if you don't know what to study, and whatever. But either way, you're gonna have to put in the work, one way or another. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I think it's just like, what are you, what what is your effort being spent on? If uh, most of your effort is being spent on like trial and exactly. error and experimentation because you're not sure what is the right way to do it, then you're going to like end up, you know, having a lot of wasted effort that don't result in anything versus can you just like figure out, okay, this is the best way to do it from the get go and you just do it the right way the first time. Exactly. And that way you can be like as efficient as possible, right? And even then yeah. it's still very, very hard, right? Um, yeah. That's really, really good advice, man. So hopefully everyone's taking that to heart. Um, but guys, uh, you know, for those of you who are still with us, if you find yourself in a similar situation, right? Like, you know, maybe you uh, don't necessarily go to target school. Maybe you're an international student, right? Maybe you've been trying stuff on your own and it just like is overwhelming and confusing and, the more work you do, the actually the more confused you're becoming, then that's probably a, a good idea at this point to, you know, reach out and get help. And like, I want to encourage you to, you know, schedule a call with our team. You can do so by going to www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. The street is abbreviated to ST. So it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. And what we'll do is we'll get on a call with you. Someone from our team will get on a call with you. We'll talk about your situation, figure out what it is that you're currently struggling with. What are your goals? How do you get there? And then like, if there is a viable path to getting there, which more often than not there, there is, you just don't know what it is. We'll map that out for you so that you have more clarity on exactly what it is that you need to do. And then from there, if you want our help, want our help doing those things, happy to talk about that. If you don't want our help, you want to do it on your own. That's totally fine. You can try to do it on your own. But like, honestly, doing it with us is going to be a lot better, but Hey, like we can't work there, work with everyone and not everyone wants to work with us. And that's totally fine. Right. So I encourage you guys to at least book the call. The call is free and like you'll at a minimum just get some free advice. And uh, otherwise um, we will. Um, so yeah, I encourage you guys to book that call and uh, we look forward to talking to you guys. But uh, other than that, um, Daniel, I want to thank you for taking the time to uh, speak with us today. And uh, we look, uh, I'm really, really happy for you and just huge congrats on uh, getting one of your, top choice offers. And uh, I'm really excited to see what you're able to accomplish.